While it is unpopular and probably illegal in several states and countries to say this out loud, a gay conservative movement is not only a walking contradiction, it's a neutered movement. In the aftermath of Dave Rubin's breathless announcement that he and his sodomite lover are actively involved in eugenics, and the conservative world largely bowed and scraped at the altar of queerness, biblical conservatives need to address this head-on with clarity, courage, and joy. This attempt to draw the line at transgenderism while embracing homosexual mirage and motherless and fatherless families and buying and selling eggs and renting wombs is arbitrary, irrational, and therefore completely unconservative. I've written on this before, specifically with regard to the Daily Wire releasing the Jordan Peterson interview of Dave Rubin and his freezers full of breast milk, and almost simultaneously announcing that they want to become the new Disney and groom your children. Biblical Christians need to stop and think long and hard about whether they want to throw more of their dollars down that hole. Yes, Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles have led a helpful onslaught against liberal nonsense and irrationality, and I'm happy to call them co-belligerents on a number of fronts. But Christians do not put their trust in horses or guns or numbers or money or brands. We trust in the living God, in Jesus Christ, and in his word. And if that is not front and center, we cannot win. So here are seven reasons why compromise with gay conservatism will never work, never win, and will land us with yet another cycle of compromises, corruption, and betrayal. One, you cannot draw arbitrary lines of morality and goodness and call it conservatism. Conservatism is not conserving the latest consensus. Conservatism is conserving truth, goodness, and beauty, grounded in God's word, revealed in nature, and preserved in faithful traditions and common law. The open embrace of sodomy and homosexual mirage is a completely novel and revolutionary attack on all three pillars of conservatism. God's word is clear that homosexuality is right up there with incest and bestiality. Nature itself declares the insanity and suicidal realities of homosexual sex, along with the STDs and fruitlessness. And our Christian tradition has uniformly rejected it as anything approaching normal, acceptable, or edifying. It is not true, it is not good, and it is certainly not beautiful, despite all their attempts with Botox and Photoshop. You can't win with arbitrary standards. Two, there are no brakes on this car. Closely related to the first point, the goddess of consensus always bites back. It has been said that democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting for what's for dinner. This is why conservatism has always been rightly suspicious of democracy. The founding fathers of our nation had done their homework, and they knew that democracy in its pure forms has always devolved into anarchy, opening the door to tyranny. Related is the fact that democracy, at its best, is only a well-groomed mob, and at worst, it's lynching and riots in slow motion or not so slow motion. Jordan Peterson tried to walk some sophisticated philosophical line in his interview with Dave Rubin, noting that raising children without a mother was unusual and not normal, but that it has apparently been now accepted by our society. But as I have noted previously, it was not accepted by our society. Rather, it was crammed down our throats by activist judges. As recently as 2008, Barack Obama was still insisting that marriage was between one man and one woman. Unless or until conservatives openly and clearly reject so-called gay marriage and homosexuality, they're no better than an evolving Obama. Which means you cannot accept this aberration from morality and nature and then object when the pedophiles demand to be accepted by the next consensus. And why not the trannies? Why not Bruce Jenner? What? Will you appeal to nature now? Will you appeal to truth? To tradition? You cannot submit to the demands of consensus and evolving on the issues today, and then object when consensus comes back around and demands drag queens and child lovers. You can't win with mob rule. Three, while it is unpopular and probably illegal in several states and countries to say this out loud, 
A gay conservative movement is not only a walking contradiction, it's a neutered movement. I mean this on several levels, but let's begin with the way homosexuality emasculates men. While there are certain flamboyant forms of effeminacy, with campy styles, affected lisps, and gates, which, by the way, is just transgenderism light, the overall point is that a man who refuses to take up the calling to pursue one woman, woo her, marry her, and be faithful to her and provide for her and any children the Lord gives until his dying day, that man is denying his manhood. He may be muscular, he may be smart, but if at that very point where he is called by God to be a man in loving and leading a woman and her children, if at that point he refuses, he is neutering himself. Homosexuality in both men and women is deeply bitter and lazy. It is bitter in its rejection of God's assignment and the way he has made the world, frequently with scars from abuse and mistreatment of the opposite sex, and it's lazy because it's easier to love someone who's a lot more like you. This is why the Greek word for effeminate means soft, and it also frequently means coward. So this is why a gay conservatism will never win. They have already compromised with the most basic reality in the world. They have rebelled against nature, truth, and logic, and you think they will help you restore sanity to Biden's circus? You can't win without masculine courage. 4. We interviewed Doug Mainwaring on CrossPolitik recently, and he pointed out the sociological and political reality that you cannot work for small, limited government without strong nuclear families. It is a simple fact that as families break down through adultery, divorce, pornography, and abuse, the government grows to meet the growing demand for referees, social services, adjudications, and welfare. A conservatism that embraces a deformed version of the family, a version of the family that is inherently unstable, is a recipe for continuing the big government statism of the liberals. You cannot have it both ways. The liberals know this. They openly want a demented version of freedom, with people free to have sexual relations whenever, however, and with whomever they want. And since that creates all kinds of chaos, destruction, and brokenness, their solution, the liberal solution, is a massive, bloated savior state that will pay all your bills, provide for all your children and your parents in their old age, health care, welfare, and send you crack pipes, if you should need one. You cannot have a civil government that is limited by God's word and common law if you will not have families governed by the same standards. And if family can be reimagined to be two dads and no mom, or three, depending on how you count, then why can't the civil government have 87,000 more IRS agents to take care of you? You can't win by supplying your enemies with reinforcements. 5. What we are dealing with in the conservative political movement is nothing less than what we have been dealing with for decades in conservative churches. The play is laughably predictable, and conservatives are the kind of idiots who seem to be willing to fall for it every single time. It starts by allowing men to act like pimps and womanizers. It starts with pastors and politicians having women on the side, affairs, and porn, and the people let them. The pastors are not disciplined and fired, and the politicians are re-elected. But you cannot admit fornication and adultery and then not get homosexuality. Porn and prostitutes is just gay sex for only slightly less demented men. How so? Well, those hookers aren't real women. You aren't paying them to act like real ladies. You're paying them to use their bodies to get them to act like men, hot and ready, and then left behind like a cheap can of beer. You weren't interested in a real woman, the kind of woman who wants to be cherished and loved, the kind of woman who longs for commitment, loyalty, and provision, the kind of woman who wants children and grandchildren. So we put up with heterosexual perversion, which, it turns out, is just practice for homosexuality. And about five minutes later, you've got men in pulpits and politicians who are at least effeminate swishers, even if they aren't yet swinging the other way. Give it five more minutes, and you've got guys who are saying they feel gay, but they aren't practicing. It's a spiritual gift, they say. Some queer treasure. A heightened sensitivity to people in relationships. And if or when the churches and states allow those men to represent us and lead us, we might as well have women in those positions as well. They look better and do the whole feminine thing way better than men with limp wrists. And so it goes, from fornication and adultery to effeminacy and feminism 
to full-blown homosexuality, and since it's all unnatural, hateful, and destructive, why can't they just change their clothes and play Mr. Potato Head with body parts? You can't win when you refuse to address the root problem. Six, the thing that conservative Christians need to get is that the root of all this compromise is guilt and despair. Why do we let this cycle go on over and over again? Because we are guilty and we don't know what to do about our sin. We've looked at porn, we've gone to hookers, we've touched people, we've been touched, we've abused, we've been abused. And when that guilt and shame builds without being dealt with biblically, people despair, believing that there is no way out, and then they make deals with the devil and one another. The currency of the devil is fear and guilt, and the systems of the devil function on this currency. We agree to protect one another, not confront sin, not deal with sin, so long as others will leave us alone. I won't bring up your sin if you won't bring up mine. I won't confront your hypocrisy if you won't confront mine. But this is like a herd of pigs rushing off a cliff into the sea, grabbing onto the tail of the pig behind them, hoping not to drown. And again, you cannot keep this kind of compromise contained. You cannot compromise sexually and have high standards financially. You cannot compromise and lie about marriage and fidelity and not become a liar and a thug in the rest of your life. The problem is guilt and fear, and the only solution is the cross of Jesus. The only solution is to confess your sins, get clean, and repent of your sins biblically. Step down from office, resign, and stop leading people toward destruction. And the doctrine of justification by faith alone is crucial here. This is the doctrine that teaches that you can become completely clean before God. Paul says in Romans 8 that there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This no condemnation does not mean no consequences. It means that in the midst of the consequences of your sin, you can still live under the blessing of God. It is this no condemnation that gives compromised leaders the courage to step down, and it is this no condemnation that gives people the courage to insist upon it and trust God through it. Incidentally, this is why conservatism must also be predominantly Protestant. Because Roman Catholic doctrine rejects justification by faith alone and insists that you can lose your justification. While there are many true conservative Catholics, and I'm thankful for them, as long as there is any tinge of guilt left, they are liable to the hooks of the devil. You can't win with hypocrisy. 7. Lastly, a gay conservatism cannot win because it cannot have the blessing of God. You can say God bless America all day long, but if you are doing things intentionally, flagrantly, openly, defiantly that God condemns, you cannot and you will not have the blessing of God. Jesus taught that God made man in his image in the beginning, male and female. And for that reason, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife so that the two may become one flesh, Mark 10. This is what it means to be made human in God's image. And this is what marriage and sexual union are. And they cannot ever be anything else, period, full stop. You may have a brand that is popular, but if you do not have God's blessing, you will fail. You may have deep pocket donors, but if you do not have God's blessing, you cannot win. And to all the conservative Christians who are tempted to think that the National Conservatism Conference or the Daily Wire or PragerU or Trump are our only hope, remember Gideon's 300 men. We don't need money. We don't even need numbers. We need the blessing of God. Speak up now. Tell your leaders that they must be faithful men who fear God, and if they cheat on their wives, require them to resign. If they will break those vows, you cannot trust them to keep any promises. And if your go-to conservative leaders are not actively resisting every form of homosexual compromise, then get new leaders. Cancel your subscriptions. Vote with your dollars. Vote with your feet. Tell them that you are only interested in a true biblical conservatism because you are interested in actually winning. Pride always goes before the fall. You can't win without the blessing of God. Thanks for watching. I want to take a second to talk about my book, No Mere Mortals, Marriage for People Who Will Live Forever, and how you can listen to the audiobook that I read for just 99 cents. 
In recent decades, we have reduced marriage to a permanent roommate situation with sexual benefits. But the biblical picture of the family is something far more powerful, far more dangerous, far more glorious, far more like a nuclear reactor than anything else in modern society. I wrote No Mere Mortals to show how husbands can lead their wives, how wives can follow their husbands, and how both together, building on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, can shape future generations and the world. The audiobook is now available at mycanonplus.com. If you haven't joined Canon Plus yet, you can get your first month for just 99 cents for using promo code TOBY99. mycanonplus.com, promo code TOBY99. Ninety nine.